Howie Roseman spoke today. We'll get into that and some other things right now. Football at 4. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, Sports Illustrated. He joins us here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, John. And before we get to some of the stuff that Howie Roseman said, I guess I want to first ask about the NFL kind of acknowledging the potential of contingency plans. Is that to appease people, or is that the first eye-opening experience that there might be a delay in the start of the NFL season? Well, I think it's both. Uh, I mean, you saw kind of the blowback when the league first came out and said we're preparing essentially for a, a typical regular season. And I had mentioned on the show at that time they were going to receive a lot of blowback for that. There's no reason you can't say that. And I talk about it all the time. We'll talk about Howie and Andy Weidel talking today on Zoom. But, you know, people act like these press conferences are under oath. I mean, it's not – you're not raising your hand in front of the court. You're saying, uh, look, it's – by that point it was March, and you're saying we have – basically no idea what's going to happen in September. So uh, the calendar's in our favor. Um, We're just going to proceed um, and and assume there's going to be a typical regular season. But at the same time, you have to plan for contingencies. They were planning for contingencies back then. There's no use talking about them at at that point, though. And to be honest, I, I don't think they should talk about these either, and they haven't gone technically public with it uh, because there's no reason to do that at this point. But they're certainly having those discussions. Everybody knew that, and everybody understood that. Right. It almost seems, though, as if the NFL does not want to uh, succumb to what else is going on. I mean, they're going to go on with the draft, and they're going to go on with business as usual. But the fact that they've kind of made it, all right, there is a contingency plan potentially. And as we kind of hinted at the other day, the the plan is to release. Now, typically, the, the schedule would be out by right about now. But the NFL is planning to release the schedule by about May 9th, and that that could be a couple different versions of the schedule. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons it got pushed back. Typically, as you mentioned, the schedule's released uh, mid-April, 16, 17, somewhere in that range, um, right before the draft, and and this year was kicked back. Many, and also mentioned that on the show for many of those reasons, because you have so many contingencies. You have so many balls in the air. uh, And when you do get to May 9th, I, I think you're going to see a normal schedule Uh, But I think there's going to be an understanding that there are other schedules, whether they release or or make them public, um, with those contingency options and and contingency plans. And and that's going to make things even more difficult. It's it's very hard to make an NFL schedule anyway. uh, But then when you talk about what what is it going to be, is it going to be a 12-game schedule? Is it going to be at neutral sites? I mean, you can imagine – uh, all the headaches that could potentially create. And, and to be honest, I would be stunned if they could get what, get something like that done by May 9th. John, uh, Howie Roseman today, Andy Weidel, both uh, speaking on uh, Zoom, it looked like anyway. Uh, the wide receiver position, that came up about why it's so difficult to evaluate, and I guess this year makes it even more difficult uh, given what's going on here. But that seemed to be a pretty big topic of conversation, at least uh, at one point of the, the press conference today. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a natural uh, topic of conversation. The Eagles have an obvious need. They've had difficulty uh, in the past, in the recent past, um, drafting receivers and, and hitting on them, whether you're talking about top of, top-tier top first-round guys like Nelson Aguilar last year, second-round pick J.J. Arcega whiteside But even you think about the Josh Huffs of the world, uh, huh. third-round pick J.J., uh, excuse me, Matt Collins, who would be a fourth-rounder. They just they haven't done a good job uh, at evaluating uh, wide receiver talent. Uh, and that's got to change. And, you know, part of the positivity of that is is this draft class and how deep it is at that position. 
And it's not just the Eagles saying that. I mean, I mentioned Eric DaCosta. He, he talked to reporters in Baltimore last week and, and said you could find a starter in the fifth round. That's how deep it is. So uh, if that's the case, and I, I don't necessarily know that is the case, but Eagles should be able to come up with a good receiver, even if they don't get necessarily the guy they would would want uh, at 21. Yeah. At some point, you should be able to get a good receiver out of this draft. Uh, you would think so, uh, if even if you don't hit on that first round pick and you get a guy later on in the second or third round. Uh, one question for Howie today: You know that they made the trade for Slay and they gave up two of the ten picks. They're now down to eight. Did he seem less reluctant because of that deal to have to give up more picks if they want to do something on Thursday night? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say less reluctant. I mean, he's been pretty consistent. This is uh, the third, I think the third time, uh, third or fourth time he's spoken to us in the off offseason. Um, and he's been pretty consistent in saying you've kind of shifted – uh, in this roster building philosophy, a lot of that has to do with just Carson Wentz coming off his rookie deal into his highly paid second year deal. That's what you have to deal with in this league at the quarterback position. And once that happens, you have to shift and you, and you have to build your roster a little bit differently. And, and part of that is getting younger players under cost effective deals. And that means your F picks. And over the past two years, because primarily early in that span uh, of what it took to get Carson Wentz and all that maneuvering, you've only had five bodies, five bodies in back-to-back years. Eagles don't want to come out of this draft with five bodies. But Howie, you know, always puts a caveat on it because, you know, he's a, he's, he's a guy who moves. Yeah. I mean, history says he moves. A lot. And he said, you might, you might go up in the first round and then go down in the second round and, and get extra assets that way. So you can do both if you're a smart GM uh, and maybe give up a pick and get two picks back and do it that way. But he's always going to leave room open to, to maneuver if he sees a guy who starts drifting and he really, really likes him. He'll go up and get him. But I've said this consistently. I continue to say this. I think he wants to be disciplined. I don't think he necessarily wants to move up. And you've you've heard some speculation about moving up to way up to 11, 10, 11, somewhere in that range. I, I don't see that happening at all. If somebody starts to slip and fall a little bit, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some you know wonky stuff that the uh, you know CD Lamb and they want to try to get up. They're they're efforting to get it into that spot. Uh, I, I would like. Do you feel that there's a receiver in this class? It's like a Julio Jones, a Calvin Johnson, someone no. that you would make that type of move for. No, no. And, I, and that's the funny thing. I was talking to a scout the other day, and he, and he said like every it, it is really really deep. And it's interesting you bring up those two names because that's the exact two names he said. But there's not Julio Jones. There's not a Julio Jones. There's not a Calvin Johnson. There's not that type of dominant, just off the charts receiver uh, at the top. So while it's a very deep class and there's a lot of very good players, there's not that superstar just, you know, is going to be a star in this league type receiver. John, uh, you asked the question to Howie about uh, not being able to get the guys in the building and how that's going to affect draft night and not getting uh, John Clark followed up with, you know, not being able to have that look the player in the eye contact. Uh, That's not something that gets discussed a lot, but the impact that might have on all the teams, not just the Eagles. Yeah, it's big. I mean, that's the difference between what NFL teams know and what everybody else who does this and has made it sort of a cottage industry, these draft guides and all these things, you know, People don't like to talk about intangibles because you can't measure intangibles. But, you know, I I always talk about if you're a first-round pick in the NFL, you generally don't fail because you don't have the athletic ability to do the job. It's something else. It could be anything from, you know, we've talked about 
at Sports Illustrated, we've talked about some wide receiver busts. And I look at somebody like Justin Blackman. Well, he wasn't a bust. He was a great player. He just had drug issues, and he couldn't stay on the field. Mm. Uh, Similar to Josh Gordon. He was a great player. Uh, Couldn't stay on the field. Um, There's always something. It could be something as little as work ethic in the fact that you you don't work hard at your craft. And and if you rely on just your athleticism and you rely on just your physical gifts, well, you're probably not going to succeed in the NFL when you have guys who are – just as good, just as athletic, who work really, really hard. So all all these little things, little tweaks, and and that's what makes this process so hard. That's why it's so difficult to pick the right player each time because think about a job interview. I mean, let's be honest. Everybody lies on their job interviews. Uh, You know, some people more than others, but you're trying – my point being – you're trying to put your best foot forward. You're not being completely honest and saying, oh, you know what, I'm really bad at this. You're not gonna accentuate that. Uh, And you tend to only get to know players when you look them in the eye, you get them in the building, you kind of get a feel for their personality, how they deal with other people. And you just can't do that in in this environment. It's going to make it harder. Totally agree. Uh, You talk to people on the phone, you think you have a good sense of them. uh, But when you meet them in person, you're certainly like, eh, that might be a little different. Last one for you, John. I know uh, you got to get running a little early today. Jason Kelsey said today he's going to come back. Was that a surprise at all? He's not going to arm wrestle anymore. Uh, but he retired from arm wrestling. Yeah, he's going to come back. Was Uh, that a surprise? I know there was a little limbo, but was that a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. There was a little, uh, you know, uh, I forget. I think it was Jeff Skaversky from uh, 6ABC had brought up the Eagles were doing their due diligence with Cesar Ruiz, who might be the best center in the draft from Michigan. That raised uh, a couple eyebrows. And, you know, Jason was pretty honest two two years ago, I think. And he said at this point he's gotten married, he has a child now at this point. His body's been beaten up a lot. It's year to year for him. So he's going through this process every year. And at some point, I think you're going to get that bombshell one of these years. And he's just going to say, you know what? I'm done. This is his 10th uh, tenth year here coming up. Yeah. Uh, and it's not this year. And that's good news for the Eagles. Uh, he's an all pro. He's been an all pro for three consecutive seasons. He's still the best center in this league. Uh, but, yeah, he's been very honest that it's year-to-year year for him at this point. Uh, he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline, John McMullen. Follow him at JF McMullen. And, of course, our draft coverage, Football at Four, leads us into next week's draft, which you can hear right here on 97.3 ESPN. All right, pal. All right, thanks, Mike. Yeah, man, Johnny Mac in the house. And, of course, he, like all guests, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline.